Pendant of TexasBrews.org, and we will be having another installment of our Cooking with Texas Brews series today, and today we'll be doing beer chili. Now, uh, my beer chili in particular, I like to use Rar's Iron Thistle. Um, it's a scotch ale, so it's got kind of a smokiness to it that works really well with the chili. Um, but, you know, you're not necessarily limited to that. It's a seasonal beer. You can't always get it. Maybe it, it doesn't even come to your area. Uh, so some other good ones to use, uh, Shiner Smokehouse, I like that one for it. Uh, St. Arnold Brown Ale, um, Independence Bootlegger Brown. You know, there are a few different ones. Uh, really, I kind of like to stick to, you know, kind of the kind of the dark but not like stout type territory for, uh, for my beer chili. So we'll get started, and we're going to start by taking one pound of uh, uh, ground beef and uh, if you notice there I just dumped uh, about three about three tablespoons of vegetable oil into my big stock pot here and what I'm going to do is So I'm basically just going to brown this a little bit, mix the two of them together. You're not cooking it all the way, because obviously the chili is going to be a big part of that. But, so you're going to brown your beef a little bit. If your pot's as hot as mine was, it's going in here. shouldn't take you too long, so now you can hear me. And now I'm sweating. But, anyway, so you mix that up a little bit. So just kind of get the outside brown a little. Nothing too, nothing too cooked through, because like I said, you're, uh, you know, everything else you put in your chili is what's going to cook the, really cook the meat. So, really, uh, my prep work that I like to do ahead of time, um, I chop up a, let's go ahead and turn the heat down, chop up a full onion, get it right here. Uh, chop up a full onion, so we'll go ahead and dump that bad boy in there. Mince four cloves of garlic. Dump that in there. Cut up two jalapenos. I like to leave a little bit of the seeds in it. Um, you know, a little bit of spice. I like my chili a little bit spicy. This is kind of an optional thing. You don't have to put jalapenos in it. I like to in Texas, so we'll mess around. I. Uh, also get a can of Rotel ahead of time and I'll drain it, um, so um, I'm just using the regular kind, you can use the spicy if you really want to kick it up, but uh, I just like to use the regular. And I like to do, um, it was about half a cup of salsa, and this is homemade salsa that my father-in-law made, it's really good, but really any kind of chunky salsa of any sort. So get in there and we'll mix this up a little. Um, I like to use mostly Texas spices, you'll see kind of a smattering of what I have here is you know, I've got some Tex Joy, which is made in Beaumont, where I'm from, and uh, so I like to use that, and, you know, some people just like to use regular salt. A lot of times I like to substitute Tex Joy for salt, just because, I mean, it's really salty, I argue, there's a lot of salt. And there's some other things going on, and hell, I just like to use Tex Joy. So, really, with, it, with all of these seasonings, I like to do, you can measure them in a cup if you want, but I like to, you know, just kind of use my hand. So, kind of do about a, a, a small little handful. Like that, you know. Um, so, I'll do that. so I've got text joy. I've got a little bit of cayenne pepper. I won't put quite as much of that in there. I just like to give a little bit of spice, and cayenne gives it a nice little creeper spice. So I'll do two little handfuls of that. And uh, some chili powder. And I'll use a pretty decent amount of that. I'll have a pretty liberal handful of that. So, that's your chili powder. Go ahead and put the top on. Some ground cumin. Put a small little handful of that in there. Mm -hmm. Small little handful or so. That's it. That's it. A little bit of paprika. A little bit more spice. A little handful of that. And finally, some oregano. And you can kind of, you can get it, as long as it's dried, you can get the whole oregano, or you can also get the, um, you 
know, it's kind of blended up a little bit more. It really doesn't matter. It's all going to cook down regardless. So put in a fairly liberal amount of that in there. And we'll mix that up. So without further ado, we'll put this beer in here. Love that noise. And you just dump it right in. Now your chili is drunk, but you won't be. Just so you know, in the uh, you know, you can still serve this to children. Um, you know, the alcohol is going to end up cooking out of this, so you're not actually going to get drunk on chili. But you know, if you want to tell your friends that you can, that's perfectly fine by me. So now what we'll do is we'll turn this on the oven. I do about a, I don't know three or four, um, and I'll just so it kind of sits there and broils. Put a top on it. And we'll go have a couple more beers, and then an hour later, we will have glory. So, we'll see you in an hour. It's been about 40 minutes, and now is the time, if you were the type of person who wants to put beans in your chili, this is when you can put it in there. I don't do it, because I don't put beans in my chili, because it's chili, not beans. But, if you want to, um, a can of pinto beans and a can of black beans drained. Uh, with about 20 minutes left, you can go ahead and add them in and let it go. And, uh, and then you'd have beans in your chili. Your choice. But uh, toppings wise, um, my favorite I like to do is shredded cheddar cheese. Normally I like to go extra sharp, but all I had around the house today was mild unfortunately. But cheddar cheese nonetheless, always very good. And a little bit of chopped green onions, chives, whatever you want to call them. Uh, my wife also likes to put sour cream in hers. Um, I don't do it, but it thickens it up a little bit. You know, so if that's your thing, feel free. We're not going to hate on you. So. All right, let's get some in our bowl. Because it is time to eat. Or you see, you know, it's... So it got a pretty good amount of liquidiness to it, but you know it's not too thick, not too thin, just how I like it. There's some pretty good sized chunks in there, um, you know, good good sized chunks of beef still floating around in there, but also, you know, the uh, the ground beef helps mix in to sort of contribute to a little bit of that soupiness. So we'll throw that. We'll throw actually first we'll throw a little bit of our cheese in there, just kind of give it a nice little layer over the top, and a little more for good measure. And a little bit of chops. And there you have it. Beer chili, Texas brew style. Alright guys, so there you have it. Beer chili. Uh, it's easy. Not really a ton of ingredients as long as you got a few spices in your cabinet. Um, so not too hard to do. Doesn't take very long, especially to prepare. I mean, honestly, about 10 minutes. Well, you, you about 10 to 20 minutes of, of prep, depending on how long it takes you to cut stuff up. And then actually, whenever you put the stuff in the pot, I mean, you're, you're talking definitely under 10 minutes. So about a 30-minute meal and then, uh, and then about an hour to sit on, on the pot. And then once it's out, you're ready and you're ready to go. It's delicious and uh, great for any time of the year, but especially for winter time. So uh, until next time, I am Scooter Hinden from TexasBrews.org. Send me an email, Scooter at TexasBrews.org. And we'll see you next time. Cheers.